Hey folks, welcome back. So in today's video, we have got something new to test out. And I uh, kind of want to show you. So I'll flip the camera around and uh, give you a quick update here what we got. So um, there's our smoker that we've made some videos with of different meats we smoke and so forth. And uh, we've got a, uh, a normal grill over here. It's a six burner next grill. We had put that together, I think probably about two years ago. And uh, you know, with grills, they tend to start aging and going bad. And the one thing that typically goes first are these uh, shields. Um, the grill needs to be cleaned off, but we haven't used it in a while. And those shields start rusting out and they start falling apart. This one here is uh, going here. Let me see if I can look. This is what typically happens with these. These heat shields get all the grease and junk falls on them. They are very thin and they rust out. And in order to rebuild your grill, you have to buy those and usually the burners at the same time, which I would probably guess needs burners. No, they're still a little good, but we're gonna, eventually it would need those. So you're talking a lot of money. And uh, at that point, you're better off spending 60, 70, $80 on stuff to get a new grill. So. We've got something that we've been looking forward to uh, to put together and show you. So let's go check it out. All right, so we've been talking a while about getting one of these and we've just received one. So we've got a bunch of boxes here. We're gonna moment them individually, but we're gonna start with the grill. So this is a uh, 36 inch Blackstone um, flat top grill that we've wanted to get and we, we've just got it. So we're gonna show you a video of putting it together and uh, explain a couple things when we're done. So I'm gonna have my boys putting it together. So we're gonna open it up and get started. All right, so here it is. So I'm gonna have them open it up and start taking it. All right, so here's the owner's manual for it um, with a 36-inch hardcover and folding shelves. And this is what we got. So it's got uh, the owner's manual here with all kinds of uh, information on it. It's got the entire like parts list and what you should have with it uh, and all that. So we are going to make sure that my boys um, follow the directions um, to get it put together. Uh, apparently it does use a double-a battery which they do not include so you would have to have those uh, you think they'd be uh, a little better on that so we're gonna go ahead and start with um, putting the wheels on and the base put together and get all that set up before we get the uh, the griddle top and so forth put on okay so we've unboxed the grill with all the pieces they're working on uh, getting the rest of the other box opened up. This has all the extra parts in it, wheels, brackets, and the two tools that you need for this, according to them, are an adjustable wrench and a Phillips screwdriver. So we're gonna get the parts. One of the first things you do is put the wheels on so we're getting all the wheels and parts out so we can get it set up. So here's the hardware pack that I just kind of want to go over that you get. You've got a bunch of these side shelf pegs. This is an M410 screw. You got peg washers, two small thumb screws. Um, and just looking at it, it's a little confusing. There's a large thumb screw and a medium. Um, shear pin, cotter pin, washers, lock washers, acorn nuts, and then M6 step bolts and M6 12 screws. So the first thing that we're going to do is put on the caster wheels, which is going to require these two small thumbnails, the acorn nuts, and the lock wash up here. Whoops. So you can see here what we got. You've got fixed wheels, both go on one end, and then the lock wheels both go on the other end. And then the um, thumb screws go on this side. And then the lock washers with the um, nuts, acorn nuts, go on those two wheels on this side. 
So the wheels on this side, the fixed ones, just have the thumb screws that you just tighten them up. So you got to place them in their correct position, tighten them up. Um, you pull those cotter pins out of the legs, but those legs will fall down. They will fall down this way if you're not careful. So see, they'll, they'll move. So when you put that middle shelf in, it'll keep it stable. So right now they're working on tightening up all these um, screws and thumbnails and so forth. The next piece to install is the shelf. Now you have to do this upside down because the legs are not stable and this is what stabilizes it. On this left side, use the long thumbnail screw. And on the other side, you're gonna use the short thumbnail screw. And you're also going to put in the um, propane, um, the propane bracket goes on there. And if you don't do it this way, it's not going to uh, be able to hold up. So it's recessed back into it a little bit, as you can kind of see. So that is the correct way you put in the bracket. And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on here. So you can see. It's going to be in that up position like that. All right, they're finishing tightening up those. So now we'll have that shelf on the grill with the propane um, bracket on this step. All right, now we're good to flip it over onto its wheels. All right, now that we've flipped it over, there it is with the um, base shelf, the legs on, and now we're going to also install um, a shear pin. We need a cotter pin and to attach the propane hanger on the upper bar of the left leg. So this is the piece we're gonna install on this left side where the propane brace was along with this shear pin and that cotter pin. Next, we're gonna need uh, an M612 screw, these two washers, and we're gonna install the paper towel holder. Okay, so you'll put the screw in here. It goes washer, the bar, washer, and the screw, and you need a short screwdriver uh, or a ratchet with a screw bit in order to put that in. And this uh, paper towel bar folds in and out, which is really nice. So when you wanna use it, you can. The next step is to put the knobs on the front. So we're gonna go ahead and put those on right now. All right, so you just literally push them onto place with in the off position, otherwise they won't go on. Next, we're going to install the handle on this side. It goes right here. There's two spots here on each side for the handle for it to get bolted on. And you're gonna use that handle with four M612 screws um, to bolt it to that. Okay, so we're gonna install the handle, four screws, tighten it up. This is using a Phillips screwdriver. This is a regular full-size uh, screwdriver will work here because we have room to use it. Okay, so next we're gonna put on these brackets. Uh, I'm gonna show one right here. This is a right, you need a right and a left. So this side is getting a left, the other side gets a right, and this is for the shelves that can be folded down on the side. So we're gonna get these installed here. This is doing the left side here, and then we're gonna put the right side on in a moment. Okay, now we're installing the right side bracket on this side. Again, two M612 screws to hold each side on. All right, so now flip it to the other side. You're gonna put a left bracket here, a right bracket here, using two M612 bolts for each side. 
All right, now we're putting on the uh, right side bracket on this side as well. And again, you never want to over tighten all your screws. You want to start them, kind of snug it up, get your other one, and then once you've got them all in there and started, then you can finish. Uh, then you can finish snugging them up. Okay, so for the shelves, you're going to use two of these uh, M6 step bolts. You're going to put these two on first. You can't put the other two on until it's installed, um, which he's going to lay it on there and then install these two so it becomes a folding shelf. So you rest it on there and then you'll reach inside and I'll show you that. So there's your step bolt right here. And you're going to put another one in on this side as well. That way you can fold the shelf down. Next on the shelves, you're going to install these. You use a peg and then a washer. And this will be where you can hang uh, your tools on. And I believe it's for both sides. There you go. You need a washer for each one with the peg. And then you can tighten them up with a flathead screwdriver if you'd like. And when installing those um, step screws, you fold the shelf down, it gives you easier access to them to tighten them up. So it's a lot easier this way than with the shelf up. So this way you can fold that shelf up and down and use it as if you don't want it, if you need it for storage, and you can put it up and there you go, shelf is installed. Now we're gonna repeat this for the other side. Next, you're just gonna put your grease trap on, and this is so, it has a rear um, escape for the grease and anything you scrape off of it, so you can take it on, take it off. They do make nifty uh, little aluminum foil, uh, like tins that you can put in there to catch it, which I would highly advise and I plan on getting, because you will wear this thing out with grease and stuff sitting in it. And uh, here's a, a picture of the grease cup liners that they make. For this grill. Um, one note just so you're aware you have that handle on there but with the shelf up you will not be able to use it so your shelf would have to be down in order for you to use that handle to move the grill around. All right one of the last steps is to put the um, actual flat top to it. Now it has pegs okay this is a peg but this one's got like a offset to it and the reason is the one peg will go in the back but first you put place the front in and you sh and you move it back this will lock in place and then that should allow your back pins to fall into place so that's what we're going to do next all right so here we are we're going to place this on the griddle you got to remember the front is going to drop into place first like that and then you're going to drag it to the back which will allow that back pin to fall into place. And now that's on. All right, so the last step is act, uh, to assemble the cover. Now this is not a lid that opens and closes, this is simply a cover. So it's got two silver handles and these are brackets that hold it on. So you're gonna place a handle in where it goes um, the way this is uh, set up is you can see the black stone and then this handle will go on the other side like this. So let me see if I can get it around here. So this is going to go on like this and then we're going to put the two screws in each. And just so you know when you um, put this on there's holes but the middle hole is the one the screw goes into just in case you're wondering. Okay so with the lid put together or the cover excuse me this is what you got so um, I'm gonna do a very uh, critical review on it kind of point out any flaws and things that I see on it so um, it does have four pegs on this side a magnetic bar here which is awesome I like that because a lot of times a grill I've had grills that don't even have anything to hang it on or one thing and, and it's doesn't fit over the plastic peg that they designed so that's nice I like that um, here is the uh, lighting piece for it to, it has a button in the middle that you would push to get this to go. Um, you've got your four knobs to start your grill for the, as far as the control in your flame. I like that. Uh, this tray down here um, is, you can store stuff on it, but it does help make it sturdy. 
Uh, I love the paper towel holder. I think that's an awesome feature. And then um, over here again, this has even more holders for it, which I like. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, this is, the shelf is a little on the flimsy side, in my opinion. Um, and it's not made out of very thick metal. It's very thin. Um, so that's not, I guess, too surprising. Um, coming around to here, we notice these wheels are very, very cheap. Um, they roll fine. There's no concern there, but they're very cheap be made. Uh, I think we were looking at one of them, or I was, as we were moving it around, and it seemed like it was really like wobbling, like the wheel was. I think it's this one here. Um, you see how that that action it takes. It's not not very uh, sturdy, in my opinion. Uh, back here, you have your grease trap, so easy to take on and off. And like I said, I highly recommend getting those tins for that. Um, two brake wheels on this side. Um, which is nice so you can keep it in place uh, this is where you would hang your propane tank on and then it would rest against here uh, so that would help you with there but we got a little problem so first of all you also have a handle here that you cannot access unless this shelf is down but let me show you what the problem is so now back to this side on this front here. Um, like I said, I love the shelf. I love the magnetic piece on it. Um, this is where you would hang your propane tank and this would kind of rest up against it. But you got a handle up here that you can't even access unless the shelf is down. Here's a little bit of a design flaw, I believe. All right, so for illustration purposes, I just have the tank, I wouldn't recommend storing them in your house in case they blow up. But here's the tank, okay? And you can't get to your handle. So you want to move it. And now your lid, your shell folds down and when you have your regulator on there, this is where it's gonna go. And you have almost, you have terrible access to your handle and that uh, hitting your uh, regulator. So I do not, do not like that at all. I think that's a very poor design. Um, if anything, the handle should have been on the opposite side of where your propane tank is, which would have been the other side. So I think Blackstone did a, a poor job in that design. I like the shelves that they fold down, but to put this on the same side that this shelf or the handle, that's a poor design. So um, there's that. Now, Let's uh, look at the lid. All right, so this cover is just to kind of keep, you know, dirt and, and um, water and so forth for getting onto it. But when you're ready to cook, it lifts right off, which is really nice. And they've designed it with brackets right here to sit on the back like that. Okay. However, here's another poor design. That's with it hanging. Okay. And... It's pushing on the grease trap. So now your grease trap's gonna get all bent up and messed up because your lid, this cover is hanging on it. So now the unfortunate thing is is that you have to have your lid hanging off to the side. And it's another thing that's in the way. So uh, what can we do about that? Well, you can leave it out without this you'd have to rest that somewhere, or they do make um, lids, which I'm gonna do a separate review or assembly on that, but we're gonna put it on this one that we bought. We bought a lid to cover this grill, um, so you can see uh, how that would work. So you can buy them with a lid that actually opens and closes like a regular grill. Um, these run for about $300. If you buy them with a lid, I think they're anywhere between 350 and 500 dollars depending on what you get and they go way up from there because of the features so for all intents and purposes this is the review of the blackstone flat top griddle and uh model 2177 you know this was the first one that came out i think some other companies perhaps have made some upgrades to that 
Um, so, but this is it, and uh, I'm gonna do a, a picture with the other lid on it. But that's that's what we've got for this. So, hope uh, this was helpful to anybody who's wondering about the griddles and looking to buy one maybe. But it's nice because you can do this outside and you can cook breakfast, all kinds of stuff on here, and uh, not heat up your house, which is part of the reason why we wanted to get one. So we uh, hope you enjoyed the video.